I'm in line to see the representative McClintock, and as soon as I get here, there's a rainbow. Yeah! <laughs> what does it mean? Yeah! Okay. <laughs>
all of these taxpayers are paying me to sit on the couch for the rest of my life. I don't want to do that. I want to be a working taxpayer and make my own living. So I want to know, short of reversing your position on the ACA, what are you planning to do to make sure that my health insurance remains affordable and for the 30 million Americans? There's no question that some people had a very good experience with the ACA, with Obamacare. But most people had a very bad experience. Yeah. 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 Consider this. Consider this. More people opt to pay the tax penalty yeah. than opt to buy into the Obamacare exchange. Yeah. The fact of the matter is that this has been one of the most common issues in the last four election cycles, during which the Democrats have lost 64 U.S. House seats, uh, uh, 12 U.S. Senate seats. The point, is, the point is, the American people have made it very clear they want Obamacare repealed. And we run out the clock on other people who want to uh, uh, ask questions or make comments if, if we comport ourselves in this manner. Let me, let me tell you this, though. We all are very much aware that we're going to be judged on our ability to deliver a vastly better health care system than the vast majority of Americans. want to leave anybody in the lurch, and the, the replacement plan that is taking shape, and, I, and I'm one of those that insists that as we repeal it, we need to address the underlying problems that gave rise to Obamacare in the first place. And that means, and that means uh, uh, among other things, you know, we give these huge tax advantages to companies to purchase plans uh, for their employees. Their employees uh, are stuck with whether or not they like them, and that they lose, if they ever lose their job or want to move to another job. Why don't we give those same tax advantages to the employees themselves so they can afford to go out and purchase a plan that just keeps their own Okay, well, that makes sense. That they can own, that they can take from job to job, and that they can, uh, they can fire if it no longer serves their needs. Why don't we uh, 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 expand health savings accounts so people can meet their medical costs and pre tax dollars? Why don't we restore the people the freedom to shop across state lines for a plan that's better than these families? Now, I think the plan is taking shape for, for the uh, millions of Americans who have been forced into Medicaid under Obamacare. If they're satisfied with that, there's going to be a grandfather clause, I think, that allows them to keep that coverage. But our objective is to establish a system where you have the widest possible range of choices. You pick the plan that best meets your own needs, and then through tax, through refundable tax credits, those plans will be within your financial reach. That's that's our objective. And the bottom line is, the bottom line is. You cannot spin Obamacare. Uh, everybody has had an up close and personal experience with it. Some has been a good experience. For many, it's been a bad experience. Uh, the last four elections have given us a very clear mandate to repeal it and replace it with something that works. And ultimately, we're going to be judged on whether we do that. Thank you, Corporal. And uh, I, before I ask my question, I just want to say that I fully support the ACA. I do not agree with your position. I'm going to change the subject, so I want to ask, do you agree with President Trump that the New York Times, NBC News, ABC, CBS, and CNN 
are, quote, the enemy of the American people. Yes, of Bitcoin for the past 30 years, and I also want to say on record that I am in full support of the ACA, but I wanted to ask you today about public education. Mm -hmm. um, that's my main concern, and here in Mariposa, we're a small rural county, our public schools are awesome, they we're underfunded, and I'm very concerned about Betsy DeVos as our new yeah. 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 Well, I grew up in Michigan and had the pleasure of having good schools there, and my family is still in Michigan, and I see what Ms. DeVos has done to the public school system in in Michigan, and I hope it doesn't happen here in California. So my question to you is that she's going to be proposing vouchers for private schools. What is your position on vouchers for taking public tax dollars out of the public school system and moving them into the private education system? And secondly, the other part of the I have is that if, if the Trump administration threatens to withhold federal funds from California, what are you going to do to protect them? Yeah. I certainly support the idea of giving families the choice between their and the public school and the private school. My daughter, by the way, is herself a, uh, a teacher. She's a teaching profession in Brookings, Oregon. Uh, uh, so, you know, I'm also very much committed to the public school system, but the best way I can think of to, to improve the public school system is to introduce competitive pressures for excellence. Uh, no. The other area of land asks the question, what makes Ford a good car? Chevrolet. Competition. to offer a better a better quality of service, uh, and the consumers then choose among those providers and the one that best meets their needs. That's called freedom. It works in the first law. What about the second part of your question about if they try to withhold federal funds from California, are you going to fight for us, or what can we expect from you if that comes out? Oh, it, it, it depends. Uh, for, for sanctuary cities, uh, I, I think any jurisdiction refuses to fight. And I think we're talking about 80% of the American people agree with that. 